Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a two-part review on the brand new Clay de Peau Radiant Fluid Foundation Matte. As of today, it is only available on the Clay de Peau website. That's where I picked mine up. I'm sure at some point it will be making its way out to other retailers. So today I will be unboxing, sharing my first impressions. Later on tonight, I'll do a little check-in, let you know how the foundation is holding up, and then I'm going to follow up day two with my final thoughts. That way you get a complete review today. So first let me go ahead and unbox and share the details. The Radiant Fluid Foundation Matte retails for $130. It's definitely a luxury price tag, but drastically reduced from the foundation from Clay de Peau, which retails for $250. It's described as a soft matte liquid foundation that combines a radiant finish with long-term skincare benefits to smooth and refine skin while minimizing the appearance of visible pores. It gives soft focus skin in an instant, no filter needed. Lightweight texture to glide onto skin, comfortable, silky smooth matte finish. It's available in 24 radiant shades. It has SPF 20. Since it's only available online for now, I had to assume that the shades were universal, so I picked up Medium Beige B30. Something I love about the bottle, which the bottle itself is beautiful, but on the bottom, in black print, so it's easy to read, it says the expiration date. So this will expire in 2022. I always really appreciate that when the expiration date is very clearly marked on the bottle. Something I found interesting was that on the website, it talks about all of the skincare benefits, how it's going to improve the appearance of your skin, but under the active ingredients, it doesn't really say. It says light empowering enhancer, skin empowering illuminator, which is pretty vague. I think for $130, I just want the ingredients that are going to improve my skin so much to be pretty clear. But then when you look on the box, if you read through all of the ingredients, and there are a lot of them listed, you can find that there are several active botanicals. Fruit extract, root extract, leaf extract, another flower leaf stem extract, I'm sure there are a lot of great ingredients in the foundation. I would just like to know what they are. The light empowering enhancer and skin empowering illuminator doesn't really tell me much. On the back of the box it says, a liquid foundation inspired by the radiance of a diamond drapes a subtle veil of light over a matte finish. It's a hybrid of makeup and skincare. Exclusive light empowering enhancer amplifies a radiant finish. Formulated with Skin Empowering Illuminator, our exclusive skincare ingredient. So it must be good, right? For $130, it's going to refine our skin. All right, let's go ahead and apply. Today I'm using the Marc Jacobs Face One brush because it is so nice and clean. And even though it's in a glass bottle, it does say shake with the cap fully closed before use. So you just have to be careful. I wonder how many accidents are going to occur. I'm gonna do one pump on the back of my hand. The first time I try a foundation, I don't like to use a primer. I like to feel the foundation against my skin, and then that way I can assess. If my skin needs something later on in the day, I know that next time I need to address it with a primer. Especially with this foundation, it's supposed to be a matte finish, but it's radiant. I'm not quite sure what that means, so We'll see what this looks like. I like the coverage. It took two full pumps to cover the entire face and blend down my neck a little bit. Part of that could be because the brush was so clean, it did absorb a little bit of the foundation, but I like the coverage. I would say it's medium buildable. It's not full, full coverage. I can see a little bit of my skin shining through, but I don't mind, I like it. It's very perfecting at the same time. 
I really like the finish. It's kind of soft matte and it's kind of radiant at the same time. I, I understand now. I do have a little reflection. It feels very soft. It feels hydrating on the skin. I think this B30 is a little bit pink for me. In the past I've used ochre. I don't know why I thought I should try beige. Like maybe it would be more neutral than the ochre, which is a bit more gold. But I actually think I would have preferred the ochre. I don't know. I don't dislike it. I can just tell it's more pink than my usual foundation, which is fine. I just reviewed the new NARS Soft Matte Complete Foundation, so that's fresh on the brain. That is far more coverage than this, and it's much more matte matte. It's more of a true natural matte, whereas this reflects a little light. It truly is radiant. It has the appearance of hydration, and it has a lot of skincare. The NARS does have hyaluronic acid, no SPF, so I think in a way that might be better for pictures. This is supposed to give 24-hour wear, so we'll have to see. I love the fact that it has so much skincare in it. The very first thing I noticed as soon as I pumped it out was the scent. If you hate fragrance in your foundation, I don't think you will like this at all. It's not super heavy. Once I started to blend it on my face, it kind of dissipated or maybe I just got used to it, but it definitely has a pretty strong fragrance. Whereas that's something I didn't notice at all with the NARS. In fact, I need to go back and smell it. <laughs> Even if it does have a fragrance, it's so light you can barely pick up on it. This has a little bit of projection. Overall, I think it looks really pretty. The only thing I'm not 100% happy about is the shade. I think it's leaning a little bit pink for my liking. Not terrible. And that's not to say that it's still the closest match for me. I think I need to finish my makeup and see the complete look. I'm back and this is the complete makeup look for the day. And I was right, now that my makeup is done, I think the shade is just fine. It's always strange when you're first trying a new foundation to see what it looks like by itself. But with everything else, my makeup done the way I usually would do it, I think it looks really nice. Not too pink after all. Really love the overall look of the foundation. My pores look smaller. It looks very smooth. The coverage is great, the finish is great, everything about it is great. I love the ingredients. The one test will be to see how it wears throughout the day because if it holds up, if it lasts and it looks really beautiful for a long time, then maybe, maybe it is worth $130. You're gonna pay a higher price point for luxury skincare in your foundation. That's just the way it goes. But it has to look really nice on the skin or else it's definitely not worth it. I like it. It feels like it is set in place and it is not going to budge. But not in a sticky way. In fact, it's not sticky at all. And this is without a primer, so I can only imagine how nice it will look when I put one of my favorite primers underneath or mix in a liquid illuminator. I think that would just take this foundation to the next level. All right guys, this is my one and only check-in for the night, testing out the new Clay de Peau foundation. It's been on my face for about eight hours. I would have liked to leave it on longer, but I just need to get a shower and wash my face. But when I look in the mirror, I think it looks just as nice as when I first applied it hours ago. I'm really impressed with how long wearing it is. I did not expect it to be long wearing. I know it said it was long wearing 24 hours, but I sort of thought, you know what? Radiant foundation, I'm not sure it's going to hold up, but it really has. I can't see any signs of even creasing, cracking, no lines. I filmed another video, I ran some errands, and around my eyes, around my mouth, usually if I'm talking a long time, you know, I'm sitting down to film, talking for hours, I start to see some something in the foundation, but there's really nothing. It still looks really smooth, really beautiful. My skin still looks hydrated. I really like the foundation so far. 
And to be honest, I think it looks nicer than most of my foundations. It's kind of the perfect combination of everything. It has coverage, beautiful finish, long wearing, skincare benefits, it's radiant, it looks really pretty. Not a bad thing to say about it. So far I give it a 10 out of 10. It's a 1 out of 10 for price, but 10 out of 10 for everything else. I'm excited to try it again tomorrow. So tomorrow when I test it out, I'm probably going to do maybe the By Terry CC Serum underneath. So I will see you tomorrow. This is day two, and today I wanna to try using a primer underneath, so I pulled out my By Terry Brightening CC Serum in the shade Rose Elixir. I was trying to find Sunny Flash, but it's hiding somewhere. So we're just gonna use this instead. I don't know why they put a foundation that needs to be shaken in a glass bottle. <sighs> gonna make me nervous every single time. Let's see if my first impression holds up. I love this foundation. So far. <laughs> we'll see. Ooh, I grabbed a lot. Mm. The smell doesn't seem to be as strong, but I don't know if that's because the By Terry has a pretty strong fragrance. They're competing now. I just smell something, but I'm not sure what it is. really nice on the pores. And I'm immediately thinking about the NARS, which I think looks beautiful. I love that foundation, but I think this one looks even better in terms of smoothing out texture. Probably because it's a little bit more hydrating, maybe. Yesterday I went in with the Radiant Corrector for Eyes from Clay de Peau. I have the shade Ivory, and it looked really nice, so I'm gonna do that again today. I also went in with the Sisley Eye Contour Mask. I can't skip this step. So. I only use about a grain of rice, very small amount for both eyes. Just rub it together on my ring finger. And you can put it on top of your foundation, underneath the concealer, mix it into the concealer, put it on top of the concealer. It really doesn't matter what order. As long as it gets to the eye, that's all that matters. The area around the eyes, the crow's feet area, this part of the cheek, that's where I can notice the biggest difference with the foundation. It looks so nice. I keep trying to think, jog my memory of my favorite foundations to compare. I know I want to revisit the Tom Ford foundation that launched earlier in the year for $150. I really liked that foundation. But now I kind of want to compare and see, you know, is it as good as this? Because if it's not as good as this, then maybe it needs to go back. <laughs> I held on to it. It's somewhat similar to the La Mer foundation, which I wore mine just the other day, so it's fresh in my mind. This has a lot more coverage. It still looks really pretty though. The finish is kind of comparable. This has more coverage and it's far more long wearing than the La Mer. My skin eats the La Mer. I don't know why. By the end of the day, it's almost gone. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go ahead, finish my makeup off camera, then I will come back and share my final thoughts and full review. I have to say, I really like the way this foundation looks on my skin. I feel like this is the best my skin has looked in a really long time. It feels really nice. It looks great. I'd say this foundation is best suited for somebody who's using an anti-aging skincare regimen. They like a medium to full coverage foundation. They wear foundation nearly every day for extended periods of time. If that sounds like you, this foundation could be perfect. Personally, I love it. I love anti-aging skincare. I want all of the active ingredients. Give me 
everything skincare in my foundation. I usually wear a medium to full coverage foundation all day, every day. So if it has treatment in it, perfect. If it looks really beautiful, even better. If you take away the skincare and the price tag and you just judge this foundation based on appearance, it's a 10 out of 10. It looks incredible on skin. Now, of course, we have to add the price tag back. So on the flip side of that, if you're not really that bothered about anti-aging, if you don't really care about ingredients in your foundation, you can absolutely find a gorgeous looking foundation at a fraction of the cost. So it's really up to you to decide whether or not it's worth it. If you don't mind the price tag, it's definitely worth checking out. I think right now this is even more beautiful than the Tom Ford foundation, even more beautiful than Sublimage. I love the fact that it comes in a pump. It has 1.1 fluid ounces. I don't think I mentioned that yet. It's something, it's a little bit more than the standard one fluid ounce, 1.1. I mean, they might as well give you a little extra product. The bottle is beautiful. It's incredibly tall. It looks really huge, but the cap is half of the size. I think these shades run pretty dark. I'm usually a B30 in foundations, but this B30 is pretty deep. You know, it's a really nice color. I like it, but I have to have a sunless stand. This would not match me without it. So... They might not have the widest shade range, but try to get a sample if you can. They do have sample cards, and I bet under the circumstances, if you contacted Clay Depot, they might send you a sample card with the foundation. That way you could at least get a nice shade match. They do have a shade match finder on the website. I put in like five different foundations and it couldn't find a match, so... I wouldn't rely on that anyhow. If you know your Clay Depot foundation shade, that's even better. It looks more hydrating than the NARS Soft Matte Complete Foundation. It has a little bit more radiance, and of course it has all of the active ingredients. It's a bit more hydrating than the Ultra Latint. Not quite as glowy as the Dior Forever Glow. It's somewhere in the middle. It's kind of funny that way. Maybe the Guerlain L'Essential Foundation. That would maybe be the closest match. And that does have some skincare and some SPF. And it has natural ingredients. So I guess if you're looking for, I don't want to call it a budget version, I think it's still maybe $60, somewhere around there. The Guerlain L'Essential, and that's one of my all-time favorites. That would maybe be the closest to this. But even that is pretty radiant. And I don't think it has as much coverage. There's nothing that I can think of that's a really close match. It is truly perfect. It does not look dry. It doesn't look greasy. It lasts. It covers. And there's treatment. The only thing you could ask for would be a lower price point, and it's clay to bow, so good luck. <laughs> if you like my Foundation 411 reviews, I have two more coming very soon. The new Chanel Le Beige will be next. I also ordered the new Rare Beauty Foundation. As soon as that collection launched, it was so big, such a huge makeup launch. I got a little overwhelmed and I ended up adding a bunch of things to cart and checking out really quickly before I even knew what was going on. So I will be reviewing that foundation and concealer as soon as it arrives. But that completes today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it and you found this information helpful. I know it's tough right now because it's not in stores yet. Even when you go to stores, you can't really try samples or find your right shade match. So shopping for foundation is a little bit tricky right now, but hopefully this was helpful. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. I cannot wait to hear from you guys. Hopefully some of you have tried it. Let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Is this your new holy grail foundation? As always, I will be linking everything mentioned, everything on my face down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.